all all right good afternoon so the subject is a uh, special histological techniques including immunohistochemistry and molecular pathology and the subject code is 21 msh 716 so so currently we are discussing about this uh, special yes sir your voice is audible and please is well also yes thank you thank you um all right so as uh, we are already discussing for past two days about uh, this uh, basics in uh, histological techniques we already correlated we identified the difference between the histopathology and the immunohistochemistry so the pri the the primary idea of uh, either, any histopathology is to identify and diagnose the cancers so cancers can be easily diagnosed by this uh, histopathological techniques but uh, coming to the immunohistochemistry immunohistochemistry gives us an add on advantage of localizing the desired uh, proteins within the cells or in the tissues so it uh, we can say that immunohistochemistry is a advanced form of histo uh, histopathology okay tissue this histopathology so here we can able to even pinpointly localize the desired antigen by the usage of antigen antibody reactions and some biochemicals okay for developing colors so that is the basic idea of immunohistochemistry and here uh, rather than destroying the proteins we need to preserve the proteins and we need to retrieve the proteins and uh, we will ensure that proteins are not destroyed so that the proteins can be targeted with the help of some antibodies so this is the primary idea of uh, uh, immunohistochemistry then uh, coming to your syllabus today i will go a little depth students so get ready for the class okay so yeah so coming to the syllabus in your syllabus in the unit 1 we have freeze drying rapid fixation and uh, they have given certain principles of hemoglobin and some uh, fat uh, cells in the body such as the central nervous system cells and some Uh, cells has been given that we can cover, and in the second same second uh, chapter they have given immuno uh, enzyme histochemistry. Now whatever it is, uh, listen students, we can go, uh, we can go to the classes in a constructive manner. Okay, uh, if I'm sticking to the syllabus, then the arrangement of certain topics in syllabus are uh, here and there. So in order to have a constructive or uh, phased manner of uh, interlinking all the topics. let us go with uh, my method okay i will give summary of all the things eventually i will cover whole the syllabus so uh, personally i am not feeling comfortable just to teach what is there in the unit 1 rather than i will go in my style and we can connect the topics to the syllabus is it okay with you students okay uh, i was i was planning to skip chapter 1 and i am going directly to the chapter 2 and other parts okay then we can come back don't worry so this will be easy to to connect everything so that is why i'm just doing some modifications uh, in delivering the lectures okay the sequence of delivery will be slightly altered uh, from the syllabus okay don't worry um anyway so coming to the solid notes so are you following me students are you listening so your feedback is very important to me yes sir yes you are listening thank you dominic yes uh, so uh, coming to the notes so as we already seen the definition of your histo pathology so here uh, one second let me keep this small ah so in histochemistry we are taking immunology histology and uh, biochemical parameters considering and we are trying to localize the proteins that we already know and we know the principle so now uh, i have given a slightly modified introduction or a definition here so the immunohistochemistry technique is used not only to determine the tissue express uh, certain antigens or not but it also determine the antigenic status of a particular cells within the tissue and micro anatomic location of the antigen in the tissue immunohistochemistry is also facilitating us to identify the micro anatomic location of that particular or that corresponding antigen within the cells and the tissue okay that is the major uh, interesting uh, application of this immunohistochemistry that is a primary application we can able to locate the point of antigen within the tissue okay and also it can able to uh, determine the uh, the status of expression of certain proteins what is this protein expression that we will see in the future classes okay that is somewhat molecular level that we can see later but protein expressions can also be studied with the help of help of uh, immunohistochemistry and that is the foundation for research any type of research starts with the protein expression studies 
So say for example, coronavirus, the spike protein expression, if we able to suppress the spike proteins that S spikes of coronavirus, then we can able to treat the patients. So the protein expression plays a vital role in the research uh, for any medical uh, issues. Okay, uh, that we will see later. Um, anyway, so this is all about the definitions. You already know the definition. We have antibodies. The antibodies will be targeted on the specific antigens on that uh, on that tissue, and tissue will, uh, and we can able to visualize the antigens with the help of antibodies, the labeled antigens, antibodies. Sorry. Okay. So same same principle. We have primary. We have antigen, co binded with a primary antibody. Then secondary antibody with a conjugate, and that will produce a color. That's it. We will pause your negative. Now, if we are using immunohistochemistry at the level of cells and tissue, then it is called immunohistochemistry. But there is an advanced form of immunohistochemistry or advanced technique where we can able to direct the antibodies, not to the antigens, but to the genes. within the cell intracellular genes can also be able to identify with the help of immunohistological techniques and that is called fish fluorescein in situ hybridization fish is used for detection of genet uh, genes also chromosomes within the cells and that is something really interesting about immunohistochemistry this is the advanced most you no know, cutting edge technology in immunohistochemistry okay uh, we do have other other technologies recently in 2019 or in 2020 we got nobel prize in uh, crispr technology cluster regularly interspaced short tail anaerobic repeats which is a marvelous breath taking technology in the, in the field of this molecular genetics so yes this is uh, uh, we are on we are on the level of we are understanding the foundation of this advanced technologies okay so immunohistochemistry is something which is a foundation for the future technologies okay so this has a tremendous application so my uh, keep your attention okay yeah so few uses of immunohistochemistry so we can able to identify replicating cells within the body we can able to locate cells that are giving certain signals we can able to locate apoptotic cells the cells that have program to die uh, eventually periodically and we can able to identify activation states we can able to identify different types of cells in that issue we can even able to examine cytoskeletal structure of the cells so these are the very few applications of uh, immunohistochemistry like this we have almost 200 applications okay now uh, i came across a very beautiful article when i'm searching for applications of immunohistochemistry and someone has really did a spectacular work on oversimplifying the uses of immunohistochemistry and i really appreciate the author who did this work i kept this applications in the group okay so few of the applications that they stated are we can able to detect prognostic markers in cancer say for example if the woman has braca uh, breast cancer then braca gene can be detected with the help of immunohistochemistry we can able to um, uh, we can able to uh detect tumors of uncertain histogenesis unknown cancers can also be detected with the help of immunohistochemistry we can able to predict the response to the therapy like uh, i we got a cancer patient then i given certain chemo uh, i given some tablets and i i want to check that prognosis means whether he is recovering with my treatment or not even the recovery status of the patient upon getting upon treated can also be uh, can also be assessed with the help of uh, uh, immunohistochemistry then we can able to detect various types of infections it can be viral origin bacterial parasitic fungal or even prions can be detected with the help of immunohistochemistry and we in genetics we can able to uh, locate the desired gene the the defect gene uh, with the help of immunohistochemistry we can able to detect a wide range of neurodegenerative disorders we can able to detect brain trauma possible brain injury can be detected with the help of immunohistochemistry and immunohistochemistry also helps in identifying muscular dystrophy muscular dystrophy is a muscle disease in which the patient's muscle will uh, uh, gradually uh, you know the body eating its own. the the our body became our biryani okay we will start eating our own uh, cell our own tissues the our own muscles that is called muscular dystrophy in one way or other way 
Okay, even that the, the starting stage of muscular dystrophy can able to detect with the help of this uh, immunohistochemistry. Okay, and few other applications include classification of neoplasms, either it is a malignant, it is a benign, it is a chronic, it is a lymphoid or it is a myeloid. The status of the neoplasm can be detected. The diagnosis of malignancy is possible. Prognostic markers can be detected, predicting the response to treatment, detection of metastasis. Metastasis is the starting stage of cancer. We can able to screen inherited, any, inherited cancer syndromes in the patient. And we can also be able to uh, check some non-tumor pathologies, such as the neurodegenerative diseases can be detected, brain trauma can be detected, muscle diseases can be detected, amyloidosis. Do you remember this amyloidosis? I said, right, that a, a plasma cell cancer, B cell cancer results in a excessive proliferation of uh, B cells, and this excessive uh, B cells will produce uh, large quantities of abnormal antibodies, and this ab abnormal antibodies will deposit within the tissues, and that will cause a, a, a protein deposit called amyloid. And that amyloid can only be detected with the help of this immunohistochemistry uh, techniques. Immunohistochemistry is the is the golden tool we have for the diagnosis of amyloidosis. Okay, it's a, it's a type of leukemia, by the way, blood cancer. And even dementia, in case of uh, uh, Alzheimer patients can be detected, neurodegenerative diseases can be detected with the help of immunohistochemistry. So these are the few possible applications of immunohistochemistry. Um, are you listening, my students? By the way, don't worry, I'm, re I'm uploading all these sessions in YouTube. You can able to Rewatch my uh, lectures, okay? So you will get some idea. Anyway, um, now students, one important uh, thing I need to discuss with you. See, you are not BSc students. Now you you came to the higher studies, which is masters, okay? At this level, you cannot expect that spoon feeding. The spoon feeding you you have since last uh, fifteen years of your education, okay? So I'm not going to entertain to provide you the notes and you will write the same same story in the in the exams rather than now it is your responsibility to study by yourself i will i'm someone who is there just to guide you on what to study and what not to study but the work should be done from your end okay so you should start studying and you should behave like master students okay and i'm ready to help you in all the aspects i know that you are a still uh, juniors, you are still in your early stage of your, uh, you know, higher education. So I am aware of it, and I will help you in all the challenges that you will encounter. But you must start working in that aspect. Okay, you must start working on uh, studying on yourself. And uh, are you following me, students? Are you listening? Yes, sir. Yes, Damani. Thank you. Okay. Now, my, uh, I want to tell you something students uh, let me go to next slide yeah see whatever the subject whatever the topic how hard it is everything is simple only students see in science what we will do is uh, if we ask a question where is nose we can able to show nose like this we can also show the nose like this okay so in science we will make simple things complicated we will discuss simple things in a scientific manner uh, for a more formal way. That's it. There is nothing great or nothing, uh, nothing which is really tough in science, okay, or in higher studies. Everything is very simple. All you need is small determination. Uh, by the way, uh, I like few quotes, you know, I really like some uh, ideals like uh, Einstein, Richard Feynman, Carl Sagan, Richard Dawkins. There are multiple great educators. Uh, and few of them, what they said is, so uh, if you able to explain a complicated thing to a seven year old child, then you really understood the topic. That is what Einstein said. And this is what I felt when I went to, through this uh, article. So there are many applications and those applications has been uh, very, uh, very articulately uh, concised into two pages of uh, uh, review paper. Really, I appreciate this others on uh, oversimplifying the applications of immunohistochemistry. So I was really expecting you to do the same work, students. See, uh, you need to start writing papers and you need not to worry about high-end journals like Scopus or uh, uh, Web of Science 
or SSCI index. We don't want that. Okay. At least just to give a try. At least try to get it published in small journals like uh, our Indian journals. Okay. UGC care journals. So you need not to go with very, you know, uh, uh, fancy tech or any fancy topics. Just start writing paper of your own notes. Okay. Of your syllabus. Try to write a paper on applications of immunohistochemistry. Then uh, uh, current trends in processes of immunohistochemistry. Uh, new methods of uh, fixa fixatives used in immunohistochemistry. You can use your own notes, your own syllabus. And that will have more impact compared to the other topics. If you take like uh, cancer biology, biotechnological uh, diseases, no need. You just stick to simple medical lab technology things. Take a simple topic, write it in your own style, okay? And it will get published. And there is one more advantage to you. Since you are in your student phase, the paper will get easily accepted because you are already guided by some senior faculties. Faculties already have the idea. So if you see, uh, if the review panel, if they see your name with a supervisor and that supervisor is a faculty, then there is a high chance of easily publishing your papers because we are, we are there to guard you. So they will think, okay, this one see, he already has so and this and this papers. So under him, this student did. So, okay, this is a genuine paper and they will accept it. And we are always there to help you. Okay, so don't worry about the writing papers. Remove that uh, dilemma in your heads that uh, writing papers is really tough. Nothing, write in your own language with some authenticity, give citations, that's it, okay. Uh, I want to really show the quotations given by Einstein in this uh, manner. See, if you can't explain it simply, you don't understand it enough. So if you really understood something means you can able to explain simply, that is what Einstein trying to say. And nothing is tough students. If you really understand something means you can teach it, you can able to explain it. And uh, this is what, uh, Richard Feynman also said, see, you can always recognize truth by its beauty and simplicity. If you understand the basics, the foundations of any subject, then you can really understand the complexity of that subject. So you try to narrow the topic down to its simplicity, okay? Richard Feynman, by the way, he is one of the best educator uh, ever lived on planet Earth, best educator. He said some more quote like, uh, the more you teach, the better you learn. Teaching is a powerful tool to learning. So you should do the teaching practices. If you want to master something, then teach it, right? If you able to teach something to the second person who is not a subject expert, if he understood means that indicates that you have excelled in your, uh, you have studied it properly. You got, uh, you, you got insights into that. At last, we, we are a curious beings. We, we love understanding. We are, we love to know what is happening in uh, 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 our surroundings. That is what we are doing regularly, but that is in different style. We, we love to know what the people are doing. That is why we are checking uh, WhatsApp status. We love to know what people are achieving. That is why we are checking LinkedIn pages. We love people, uh, the people trends. That's why we are checking Facebook. Even Facebook, WhatsApp, LinkedIn, is a kind people thinking that is entertainment, but that is a built-in mechanism of human curiosity. We are just using our curiosity for peoples, but we can also use the same curiosity in our studies. Studies is not uh, something beyond Facebook. It is also a type of Facebook only, the slides. So you try to reconstruct the way you are thinking about study students. They are not at all tough, okay? Um, at last, understanding will give us a kind of pleasure. And that is what Carl Sagan said. And uh, I really want to translate that in Hindi and I, tr I tried, I don't know whether the translation is correct or not, but I will show you this. See, understanding is a kind of ecstasy. In my Telugu, it translates to you know, that is absolutely correct. If we understood something very, very tough thing, then we thought that it is very tough, but at last we understood it. And that will give the best pleasure, the best happiness. Yes, today I know what 
वन सी सर इज टीचिंग टूडे आई अंडरस्टूड वाट द डॉक्टर डूइंग टू द पेशेंट टूडे आई अंडरस्टूड हाउ टू डायग्नोज दिस पेशेंट टूडे आई अंडरस्टूड हाउ टू ट्रीट दिस पेशेंट टूडे आई अंडरस्टूड हाउ टू रेक्टिफाई दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम इन दिस टेस्ट Yes, understanding will give a kind of pleasure which is unexplainable, and this will live forever with us. So try to develop that uh, that attitude of uh, you know um, appreciating knowledge, appreciating understanding, uh, sharing your knowledge, and expressing what you understood in research articles or review papers. And we are always there to help you in all the. Uh, all the time in all the aspects at all the circumstances you got my point right so by this i would like to start my actual lecture of immunohistochemistry are you following me students yes you, sir you must write paper students okay yes. i will help you uh, i can't motivate even than this yeah, okay <laughs> yes um yeah so coming to the general uh, protocols even a histochemistry protocols so as we already seen the protocol so what are the three protocols can anyone recall students yesterday we discussed what are the three protocols first one fixation uh, so pre treatment no no fixation uh, tissue preparation fixation. okay tissue uh. Uh, tissue preparation pre treatment and staining okay so in tissue preparation Stain. yes very good so in tissue preparation we have to ensure about the fixation sectioning and mounting and in pre treatment we need to ensure antigen retrieval inhibition of endogenous enzymes and blocking of non specific uh, sites on the tissue then right. in the staining we will go with the staining we already know primary secondary antibodies washing that's it right so these are the three important phases in immuno histochemistry until and unless you are clear with this picture this summary you can't able to you know you can't able to connect the next uh, topics so this is the foundation this uh, three parts is the foundation for immuno complete immuno histochemistry tissue preparation pre treatment and staining okay tissue preparation include fixation fixation sectioning mounting pre treatment include antigen retrieval inhibition of endogenous components and blocking of non specific sites and staining okay so now students uh, before going to tissue preparation first we how the actual problem is taking biopsy from the patient so we took the biopsy from the patient then uh, we need to fix it in a different way and also here they haven't mentioned about section cutting oh yeah here it is sectioning okay section cutting so uh, for this purpose we have a very uh, shortcut approach for tissue preparation that shortcut approach will be cryo preservation or freezing freeze drying you take a tissue keep it in a minus uh, uh, 180 degree centigrade uh, liquid nitrogen then your tissue will be get uh, frozen frozen okay Uh, by suspending tissue in super solution that is called freeze drying and that is what the first topic given in your syllabus about freeze drying the technique of freeze drying okay so frozen section preparation so frozen section has advantage and disadvantage students the advantage of frozen section is immediate uh, immediate tissue or block preparation and sectioning is very fast within 5 minutes we can make the section okay then other advantage is yes it it will preserve all the proteins so we can able to locate the proteins these are the advantages but what are the disadvantages of frozen section the major disadvantage is the morphology will, will be not clear since the tissue has just water frozen water the the, the cell morphology won't be clear this once the solid ice is thawing once the solid is melting the morphology won't be clear under the microscope so poor morphology is one disadvantage then limited prospect to studies we have very limited time to analyze the tissue and uh, very limited uh, properties can be studied in the tissue upon freeze drying okay then storage of material is very tough 
if we are going with the normal tissues then we can able to preserve them but an ice cube preserving an ice cube will be a tough so storage of this section material will be difficult then cutting difficulty of paraffin sections so our microtomes are made for cutting paraffin blocks not our uh, ice blocks you may ask me sir we how uh, this one what is this cryo microtome even cryo microtome has many technical challenges and uh, disadvantages okay so technically speaking students frozen section looks like a shortcut approach but it's not an ideal approach for uh, getting immediate sections uh, or uh, uh, for a uh, tissue processing so frozen sections are not ideal frozen sections we only opt in the uh, in the situations of emergencies uh, the patient is in the uh, surgery and suddenly patient got some uh, we identified the tumor and we need to know whether it is a benign or malignant tumor within that that minutes during the surgical time at that time we can opt this uh, uh, frozen section method but if we have a, uh, a good time then uh, other classical methods will be better what are the other classical methods that i will i will discuss okay like uh, we have vapor fixations those so now uh, for next one day for next two classes we will focus entirely on the part one of our immunohistochemistry what is the part one this one fixation sectioning and mounting so we will uh, we will excessively discuss in detail about fixation for next two classes there are many types of uh, fixative methods that we will discuss okay so yeah so if uh, as i said stated we have chemical and physical fixatives chemical immersion fixation and physical freezing and drying let us go with this uh, drying method of fixations drying method has more add on advantages compared to compared to the freezing technique okay freezing method of fixation so yeah there are <laughs> there are certain disadvantages for everything students even for uh, freeze uh, freezing or drying they do have their own pros and cons that we will see later okay so tissue fixation maybe um, this is enough for today from tomorrow onwards we can go with this tissue fixation okay so tomorrow onwards i will discuss all these slides i think we have almost 50 slides but uh, we can i will ensure you to know everything okay so a quick summary of today's class so in today's class we discussed about uh, the introduction to immunohistochemistry then we discussed about the definition of immunohistochemistry then principle of immunohistochemistry then we discussed about uses and applications of immunohistochemistry few of the applications of immunohistochemistry including prognos uh, to identify the prognostic markers in cancers to identify the tumors of uncertain histogenesis to predict of response to therapy to detect various types of infections to uh, applications in genetics to detect neurologic neurodegenerative disorders to detect brain traumas and even detection of muscular dystrophy can be uh, possible with the help of this uh, immunohistochemistry other uh, applications include classification of neoplasms diagnosis of malignancy prognostic markers prediction of response detection of metastasis screening of inherited cancer syndromes neurodegenerative disorders brain traumas muscle diseases amyloidosis and dementia can be able to detect with the help of this immunohistochemistry okay uh, yeah so in and we also discussed about the general protocol of immunohistochemistry we have tissue preparation pre treatment and staining tissue preparation include fixation sectioning mounting pre treatment include antigen retrieval inhibition of endogenous enzymes and blocking of non specific sites and staining include the primary secondary antibody staining okay so yeah in tomorrow's lecture we can continue with the fixation uh, methods methods of fixation in immunohistochemistry i hope this is fine for you is there any doubt students in today's lecture no right can i end this session sir yes so please uh, explain the uh, principle once yeah. again yes Uh, principle is this one uh, uh, just pin there this one uh, the principle is very simple we uh, we will take uh, a antigen preserved tissue we will go with primary antibody secondary antibody secondary antibody is conjugated with some uh, substrate that substrate will produce color upon uh, in positive cases that's it that is the principle uh, okay. principle is no different from definition definition or introduction 
everything is same only okay yeah okay sir thank you sir yes okay students may i end the session okay i took your attendance you all can leave students thank you very much you can leave